The horrible things that happen to a society is not only by the decisions of the governors, but also by the people who knowingly or unknowingly followed their thoughts. And maybe even more importantly, by the ones who chose silence over taking an action. And then one morning, when it all seems to be finished, you open your eyes, you look at the window, and you see the corpse, one after another, remained from the yesterday night. You can also see the feeling of guilt, which now belongs to the ones who didn't raise their voice. Excuse me, I'm looking for Hannah Schmidt. Schmidt just left. Left? Did she say where she was going? Silence in the court! Nancy! I'm going to take these cases one by one. My name is Hannah Schmidt. How wrong can you be? Today's movie is The Reader, the movie which is about love and a different look at a horrible event. The story is about a teenage boy who one day feels really sick on the street and a woman who seems to be in her 30s helps him out. From the very first day, they start having feelings for each other and then soon after, they start a romantic relationship. Although it is a very rocky relationship, but you can see the passion and love every time that they get together. Also, there is an important element in this movie, which is reading books for the woman by the boy. So every time he gets to her, he starts reading different books for her and she seems to be really enjoying it. After a while being in this relationship, the woman gets promotion on her job and then we see no sign of her. The woman is disappeared completely and the boy is left alone, desperate and very, very lost for her love. Years pass by, there is yet no sign from the woman and the boy who is older is studying in the university. So in one of their projects, they have to go to the trials and to see the whole process in person. And there, he sees his first law sitting there as a defendant for being as a scarred participating in the Holocaust disaster. Meanwhile, Hannah, the woman, gets accused for being in charge of keeping the prisoners in the church in a fire while the doors are locked from outside. Hannah, who is guilty but was not really in charge of that event, doesn't refuse this claim, but she admits it for a very, very important reason. There's no need. I wrote the report. They want her handwriting sample to adjust it with the documents that they have. But she doesn't want to write anything because she's illiterate and she's really ashamed for that. So she refuses to give her handwriting and instead she admits the accuse on her. Here Michael, the boy, finds out a fact that she is illiterate but he refuses to present his claim to court. In the end, Hannah is sentenced to life and Michael doesn't disclose this secret to the court. So Hannah is sentenced to life, okay, she is in the prison. After some years, he starts a special kind of communication with her, which is reading the books. This time, he starts recording his voice, reading the books that Hannah might like, and Hannah, this time, gets literate. So what she does is that she listens to the voices and she follows the lines on the book, and she learns how to read and how to write. After a while, Hannah is told that she can be released from the jail, and she can just start up her life outside. But it is kind of late. She got to something that leads her to death. She commits a suicide by hanging herself over the books that she has read. She steps on the books, goes up, and reaches death. Just like that. So now we know the story, that what exactly happened. And we also know that this movie is not like those kinds which are really metaphorical, just like Mother Susperiarum or Shining or so many other movies. This movie seems kind of simple to understand it, but it still it has some deeper, deeper meaning which needs to be talked about. Shame can shape one's feeling and actions. And this movie is showing the impact of shame and guilt on people. In the reader book by Bernard Schlink, Michael says that the pain I went through because of my love for Hannah was in a way the fate of my generation. So what does that mean? What is the fate of the generation doing with his pain for Hannah? The movie is focused on the post-war generation of the Germany. It is showing the impact of war on the generation after World War II and how some of them were dealing with the feeling of guilt which was having a very heavy shadow on their society back then. Do you know how many camps there were in Europe? People go on about how much did everyone know. 
Who knew? What did they know? Everyone knew! Our parents, our teachers, that isn't the question! The question is, how could you let this happen? And better, why didn't you kill yourself when you found out? Okay, so so far we could understand that Michael is kind of feeling guilty for being one of those who didn't do anything for their society. And this is the fate of the generation that is said in that sentence. But what about the shame? Is he ashamed of his love? The answer is yes. He turns his head down and keeps it hidden. He sees Hannah in the court. He puts his professor and classmates down when they start asking questions related to Hannah. Which one? The woman you're always staring at. I'm sorry, but you are. So he is ashamed of being in a relationship with such this person. But he's not alone in this dark deep hole. Hannah is also ashamed. And she's even more ashamed for being illiterate rather than feeling guilty for those people she led them to death. In one scene, we see that she gets promotion on her job, but she refused to do it. And instead, she starts working as an SS guard. Her excuse in the court is that they need a guard, so I joined it. But it's not true. I heard there were jobs. The hidden fact is that she doesn't accept the promotion, so they wouldn't understand her little secret. So she prefers to do something even horrible to cover her secret. Let's not forget something. This movie is from the perspective of the dominant ones, the people who were dominant in the Holocaust and this whole disaster. And there is a very important point. When she's at the court, they ask her that, why did you do this? And she says, because I was responsible for it. I was ordered to do it and it was my job. We were guards. Our job was to guard the prisoners. How could we have restored order? And if they'd all come rushing out, we couldn't just let them escape. We couldn't. We were responsible for them. So we can see a special look in here. Special look that some of the guards had. Some of them didn't really know what they were signing up for. They knew they were going to be guard. They knew that they were going to kill people in this process. But they had a very low understanding of the nature of the things they were doing. So this movie, as it is said by the cast, is not making an excuse for what they have done. But it is raising a very important point. And the point that I say in this movie is that instead of making this question that how on the earth could they have done something like that, let's make this question that what psychological and social reasons could have led them to do such a horrible thing. So, so far we could get to this understanding that Hannah, Michael and so many other people are ashamed for some special reasons. Okay, but there is one question left. Why Hannah is in relationship with a teenage boy? Is she pedophile or something? Mm, no, we don't think so. As it is said by Kate Winslet, this relationship has love in it. And Hannah enjoys spending time with him. Hannah actually loves him. But why did she choose a teenage boy? So far, we know that she is illiterate, right? Don't you think that holding this secret would be easier with a child rather than with an adult? Yes. Children don't pay attention that much. And so does Michael. Michael loves him a lot and we all know that. And probably not anymore. Not anymore when he finds out that she was a guard in Auschwitz. But he can't lose her completely. As Ralph Fiennes has said, he doesn't want that intimacy. He doesn't want to be engaged with her. And he doesn't want to write her. It will make him feel guilty. But at the same time, he can't lose her completely. With the help of Michael, Hannah gets literate. She can read now. She can write now. She's got to a knowledge and an understanding. And when she remembers her past and her actions, she feels guilty. Now she feels guilty. But let's not forget that Hannah says, it doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I think. The dead are still dead. It doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I think. The dead are still dead. So she has this feeling of guilt and she can't do anything for any of them. And then we see that she climbs up the pile of understanding she's gathered and she hangs herself while her eyes are looking down on the books. This movie is amazing. It's fabulous masterpiece.
and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you like my video, then put your like, put your comments, and also for the next time, I'm going to introduce the perfect cannibalist movies and talk about them. So subscribe this channel and ring the bell so that you would be informed when I upload it. Until the next video, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.